Welcome, everybody. Hey, what's up? Hey, girl. <laughs> hey, Pastor. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm trying to figure out this technology. You know how it is. Oh, yes. So we see, I see that Natalie is on already. What we want to do is go ahead um, and try to share this post as much as we can. And yeah. we're going to give people a few more minutes to come on. Hey, Natalie. What's up, my friend? Natalie has not missed one family. night. Wow. Praise God how many, for that. How many of you guys have not missed one night? Go ahead and give me some comments. Um, we're just going to give everybody a few minutes to get on, and I'm going to try to find it right here so I can see the comments. Uh -huh. I need to share that to my page real quick. Thank you. Yeah. And if you guys want to start a watch party, that would be great, too. Uh -oh. Here we are right here. So there we go. I'm trying to get the comments. There we are. So we have Nikki Bur Burrell on, Natalie, Janice Reddick, Faye Griffin, Gazzy. What's up, Gazzy? Me and Gazzy's going to be doing a, um, a Facebook Live together in a few days also. And we have Huston Swanson watching. Houston. Thank you. Hey, buddy. You know him? He's all the way from South Carolina. <laughs> wow. Welcome. Welcome. Yeah. We're just going to give everybody a few minutes. So as you guys know, we've been doing a 30 days of inspiration. And uh, first of all, I want to say thank you for letting me and Sierra come into your home tonight. Like in the book yes. of Acts, we are um, coming into our home. We just don't get to break bread. We can break it, right. you know, in our own home. <laughs> but that's we get to, right. that's right. We get to go into your house and you are coming into our home. And just want to welcome you and thank you. And I'm telling you tonight, I think you are going to be in for a treat. Amen. So um, the Lord is really going to bless you. I want somebody to go ahead and put in the comments, the Lord's going to bless me tonight. Come on. The Lord is. I'm going to type that. The Lord's going to yeah. bless me. Yes. The Lord is going to bless me tonight. Amen. How many of you guys know that the Lord wants to bless you? Anybody know that? He wants to bless you more than you want him to bless you. He is going to bless you tonight. Well, we've been talking a lot. We just, we want to come in and just give you a word of encouragement. We want to cheer you on. We want to be your biggest cheerleader and just say, hey, you know what? You're going to make it through this. As I've told you before that um, warfare does not stop, um, but we learn to get in a position where we know how to fight and fight from a place of victory instead okay. of a place of defeat. So once you understand that and you know that, you're going to like, oh, wow, I could have been sitting here this whole time. Instead of fighting from a place of defeat, we're going to get and hopefully bring you up to a position that you can, you can fight this fight in a place of victory. That's and right. so, um, Sierra, wow, she has got such a powerful testimony. And I'm telling uh -huh. you, you guys want to share this because I'm just going to give you a few more minutes. Everybody, if you will, that, that's on, just share this because you, um, you're just going to, you're going to hear from the Lord tonight. I mean, I believe that God has a word for you tonight. And mm -hmm. so let's just go ahead and share it. Let's get the word out. Tomorrow on One Voice Makes a Difference podcast, Sierra is my guest <laughs> and she is coming out with her full testimony and we are praying. It's coming out on Charisma um, Media. And mm -hmm. we are so excited about it because we're believing that this testimony is going to go worldwide. And we are believing yes. that um, people will be set free and people will come to know Jesus through this. Amen. That Amen. people will come out of darkness through this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm really excited. And then the next week after that, her mom is on. Woohoo! <laughs> hey, I'm so excited. You can't, I mean, you don't want to miss either one of these 
tomorrow she comes out, the podcast come out at five o'clock in the morning. If I'm going to send you a link in a minute, if you want the link to the podcast, we'll go ahead and put that in the comments. But we're going to talk a little bit tonight about warfare. And as we mentioned before, that um, and Sierra, I'm going to just say a couple of things. But if you feel like God is telling you something else, hey, Daniel, welcome, welcome. And Jennifer, welcome. If Sierra, if the Lord tells you something else and you want to add to what I'm saying, go right ahead and speak. Because this woman, you guys, she has such a prophetic mantle upon her life. Mm -hmm. And the Lord is doing such a great work inside of her. But she really is called to the nations and to speak Amen. life to the nations. Amen. So as I was telling you, one of the ways, the tools, Sierra, that we had talked about before that we, how we fight warfare is by number one, just resisting the enemy and saying, right. no, I'm not going to receive that. You know, you've come in like this. And, but a lot of times as, as Christians are in warfare, the enemy will come in and start speaking to them as though it's first person and they think it's their idea, but it's really the enemy coming in and planting seeds. And you have to say, oh no, not today, Satan. Oh no, devil, you're not coming in and planting those seeds in my heart. So that's one way. What's another way, Sierra, you think we can just fight this battle, a tool that we can use against the enemy and spiritual warfare? Well, first, thanks for having me on. I think this is an amazing opportunity to share the truth, which uh, that's the only thing that will set captives free, which is the truth. You know, we have opinions, um, but then there's truth. And um, if it's okay, I'd actually like to start with, with a, a word of prayer, just real quick, just to cover us, yes. uh, cover our listeners. Um, so, Father God, I come before you in the name of Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Father, we thank you for the power of the blood, the power of your name, and the mm -hmm. power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we know that we have authority. And so we just declare right now in the name of Jesus mm -hmm. that as this word goes out in the airwaves, nothing can interrupt what you have established for tonight. Mm -hmm. We cover every person that is listening, north, south, east, and west. Mm -hmm. We thank you for international listener, listeners and domestic, God. And we declare that what you have destined for those that are listening tonight shall never return void to you in the name of Jesus. Yes. So, mm -hmm. um... Amen. You mentioned, you mentioned the enemy speaking. Well, I'll tell you, you know, very clearly the Bible talks about my sheep know my voice, right? So yeah. this talks about a level of intimacy with your father that you have to already have cultivated. And the enemy, the very first thing he did with Eve was question whether or not she understood God's decree, God's mm -hmm. word, God's declaration. Mm -hmm. So it's not that he will come directly in and say, Hey, I'm Satan, and I just want to interrupt your day. He's going to come with deception. He's going to come and lure you into a place of questions, of doubt, which ultimately lead to confusion. Yes. And so the battle, the battle is right here, six inches between ear to ear. It's, that's yes. where the battle lies. It's not in your spirit. It's, and, and here's the thing. Can I just keep it real tonight? Let's the battle is not only with Satan. It's with your flesh. Yeah. A lot of the things we're dealing with, we can just shut down if we would obey and just say, I'm going to crucify my flesh and I'm going to recognize the word of God. But how do you recognize his voice? He will never deviate from this. He will never deviate from his word. Mm -hmm. and so I just encourage, you know, my husband and I, we're, we're, we have to fight uh, things that we have established in the flesh to literally say, God, I want more of you. I've mm. got to shut down social media. I've got to say, you know what? On my to-do list, God has to be first. God Amen. has to be first. That's right. That's powerful. Sierra, you went out for a minute. There you go. Yep, I'm here. I'm okay. back. All right. I got you. I got you. So um, Sierra has a very... Uh, she has a sweet perspective from battle and warfare also yeah. because she worked with the FBI and she was on the task force. She and her husband, can you hear me? I hear you. Okay, good. And she was on the task force. So she knows the kind of warfare that's out there. And boy, she has told me some stories. I mean, and some things that would just blow your mind, but I'm going to tell you guys, there is evil out there. If you're wondering if spiritual warfare is real, it is real. And like Sierra said also that a lot of times we're fighting with our flesh. 
our flesh wants what it wants. You know, when you want a piece of chocolate cake, it wants it and it's going to run to it. No matter what you've said, I'm not going to do it this week. I'm not going to eat that. I'm, you have your plan. And then all of a sudden your flesh gives in because you want That's what you right. want, but you crucify your flesh in so many different ways. Well, yeah. I just want to get down to the root of this and uh, let's just talk about it, Sierra. And let's just be real with people. Um, let's talk about the root of rejection. There's so many people that is carrying around rejection so can you tell us a little bit from your perspective and your testimony and what you've been through with that? Yes, absolutely. I think the root of rejection will always point back to one's identity. Mm -hmm. um, understanding who you are in Christ. You know, I, I've um, had a very successful career. And like you mentioned, I had a law enforcement career that I recently retired from. Um, and the money that I was making, the stature that I had in the law enforcement community, all of these things, the accolades and all of the, the, the things that we purchased, all of these things never fulfilled me. Um, and I think it's because I had no true identity in Christ yet. I, I had all of these goals, right? And it, there's nothing wrong with having a goal to go to college and actually uh, be a professional in a, a certain genre. Mm -hmm. But what does God say about your destiny is what matters. And yes. so you can waste a lot of time in life fulfilling mm -hmm. your own desires and never meet the very one thing you were created to fulfill. That's and right. so your identity is lost in mass and whether I want to be a banker, a law enforcement officer, a lawyer, um, mm -hmm. just a mother. And for me, um, rejection has always been this sour, this um, this bruise that never really got totally healed, if we're honest. Mm -hmm. It's like the scab that just kept get pulling off when a friend or, you know, you, you look at life through the lens in which you're, you're operating. And so you have a perception of a topic and it may not even be the truth. Yeah. And so once God, once, the, once I let Jesus really start healing my inner man, wh who's my inner man? That's my spirit. Once I came into agreement with his plan, I said, here's my soul. Mm -hmm. I had to surrender. I'll never forget the day the Lord and I were having a conversation and, and the Lord said to me, Are, you have to let me actually rescue you. Mm. And I sat there and was like, are you kidding me? I'm at the altar. I'm praising and worshiping. I'm doing all these things, but I had mm -hmm. not yet truly allowed him to rescue me. And what he meant by that, Janet, was will he, number one, be permitted to be Lord and in being Lord, that means he has the permission to hold the mirror up to my face and say, do you see these unholy alliances? Wow. So, so when you have unholy alliances, let's, let's talk about it. Rejection. What, what are some of the things we do to fulfill um, the areas of need? A lot. We, we have unholy sex. Mm. Well, unholy sex leads to unholy soul ties. All right. And so if you want Jesus to be Lord over your life, you're going to have to let him cut off not just the things that you can see. He needs to be able to expose to you and you only. He does not embarrass. Mm -hmm. He does not embarrass his children. And that's where he begins to reveal the source of that root of rejection. Mm -hmm. Number one, your identity. It's got to be found in Christ. Number two, the Lord is never going to allow you to pimp him out. All right. Let me say that again. He's not going to let you pimp out the anointing he's given you for, for his glory. So you're not going to be able to perform on Sunday and then Monday through Wednesday, you're living an alternate lifestyle or you're wow. living a certain way that doesn't bring him glory. And mm. so what he was challenging me with privately was, does your private life or your public life measure up to your private life and vice versa? Mm -hmm. So I had to get to a place where I said, I don't even know who I am. Right. I know I'm Puerto Rican. I know I'm a woman. I know I'm loved by you. I don't know who I am. Mm -hmm. And he finally said, I'm glad you, I'm glad you came to that place. Let me show you and tell you who I designed you to be. Mm -hmm. And when I let God, because I, I, my parents are wonderful and they gave, they instilled incredible values, but that wasn't enough to win in spiritual battles. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I talked to you and, and I don't want to get ahead of tomorrow, but we talked about how I had a praying mother. Mm -hmm. Right. She set examples. I would see her praying night and day. But but watching from afar is different from sitting at her feet. 
And mm-hmm. so sitting at the master's feet taught me, number one, who is my daddy in heaven? And can I really claim him to be daddy? Because most people that are dealing with identity issues don't want to talk about the word daddy. Yeah. They don't want to talk about father. And for me personally, I had to let Jesus usher me into a safe place mm-hmm. by letting him rescue me. Yes. Yes. So, uh, you know, I would tell your listeners and, and our listeners tonight, if you really want to get real with the Lord about rejection, you first have to acknowledge there's very possible. It's very possible that I have a root. Mm-hmm. Every human being born alive will need deliverance. Yes. I don't care who they are. Mm-hmm. You need deliverance. Um, my husband and I had the privilege of going through a local ministry called Holy Spirit Encounter. Uh, about a year and a half ago, it was a godsend because even though we had been Christians for a while, already traveling in ministry, we still needed more deliverance and inner healing. That's right. And we we needed to to get to it because there's layers to this thing. You know, mm. I tell people often, deliverance can be immediate, but your inner healing may span. Mm. Deliverance can also make take some time. You yeah. talk about how, where where the demons operate. Well, they operate in the mind. They operate in the flesh. I think about the lunatic boy, um, yeah. uh, the, the, the man of Gadara, the boy that had epileptic seizures and he was yeah. and the woman with the issue of blood. So we know, okay, this is where you operate. My yeah. flesh and my mind. I have to constantly crucify this. What is mm-hmm. crucifying? Saying, you're not going to be Lord over my life because I already destined the one that should be Lord over my life. So th- what does that look like in practicality? Mm-hmm. If you just had a fight with your husband, but you're supposed to go out and preach in 10 minutes, you better get that right. Mm -hmm. Or if you're, you just had a a disagreement with your parents, a disagreement with someone that God has put over your life in a form of authority, you've Mm -hmm. got to get to a place of humility and honor them. So God is never going to be out of order. That's where Satan plays games. The first thing first, get things in order, get things right. Humble yourself. Yes. And submit. Yes. And you know, are you still there? I can't hear you. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So um, it just came to my mind that just because you feel rejected doesn't mean that you are rejected. Okay. A lot of times people feel a certain way. Therefore, they give in to the argument or they give in to the circumstance because of what they feel you know, and what you feel is probably because of something that is familiar in your life. So if rejection is familiar, then as you're growing, even with God, you're, you know, as you're growing with him, um, we'll go through these tests and trials and he's going to get you to a place where, you know, you can learn this just because I feel it doesn't mean that I am. Because I am accepted by God, number one. He is our number one. And I think that I'm not, I am not kidding, Sierra. There are so many Christians walking around and they're so wounded. They are Mm. lost. They don't know what they're supposed to be doing. They don't know how to have a relationship with God. They're tired of church. Can I just say that? We're pastors here and And even, you know, uh, we have church, but people are tired of just going to church and leaving the same. They're ready for something different. And the the warfare that I believe that's going on right now is that there's so much rejection out there. And and Sierra and I were talking about this earlier, that when you give in to that feeling and you believe it, if you don't stop it right then, and if you don't recognize it, hey, this is an unholy alliance. I need to align myself up with the word of God. And how do I do that? By giving into what the truth says. The truth will set you free. What does God say about you? It doesn't matter what people say or what people think or even how they feel. It doesn't matter if they reject you or not. What matters is um, how you think God feels about you because you're not rejected by God. You are accepted by him. But Mm. if you feel like you're rejected by people and you take that emotion on as your identity, you will eventually begin to feel like you're rejected by God. So you won't even try. You won't even try to get into that relationship because you don't want to be rejected, you know, and then 
um, this is what Sierra and I were talking about is like when you give into that emotion, then all of a sudden doors open and it's connected straightly to rebellion. Tell us a little bit about that rebellion. Yeah, so I would I would I would honestly equate rebellion in the realm of spirit to be the twin of rejection. Mm. You know, the enemy operates in um, stealth warfare mm -hmm. and in, in law enforcement, one of the things that we would always do to prepare for an operation is we would study not our enemy, but the one that we would consider the criminal, right? Their behavior, their tactics, their, their mode of operation. Um, when we were going to serve warrants, everything was legal. We had to get a judge to sign off on the warrant. We had to have probable cause for the warrant. What Christians have to remember is that Satan, and, and I'm not here to promote him. Let me just make that clear to your um, viewers. We're, as a body, perishing for a lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, this topic is not often taught in church because, let's keep it real, many don't know enough about this topic to even teach it. And there is a fear of rejection from the, 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 the parishioners to the pulpit when the Lord says, teach the whole gospel. And mm -hmm. the very first thing Jesus did when he was um, filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, when he came out of the Jordan, was to go and cast out a demon in the synagogue, which is the church. Mm -hmm. And so if we can get to reality, the reality is this: Satan is a master legalist. He operates in legalities. He wants you to believe one thing when he has a legal right in another. For example, mm -hmm. um, what is an accusation? We all hate to be slandered. That is not a... A, a human emotion that if, if they do, they need deliverance, okay? But if yeah. you enjoy being slandered and defamed, what happens? There's an internal um, defense mechanism that rises up. We typically want to defend ourselves and protect ourselves. Well, then we get into rebellion because the Lord says, that's my area of expertise. Hold up. Mm -hmm. If you're going to give me your life, that also includes your reputation. That also includes your name. That also includes your ministry, your business, your children. And so what Satan wants to do is he constantly jabs and he jabs at your mind. He jabs at your emotions because here's the thing. Check this out. If he can get you to stumble physically, emotionally, which is where his, that's his playground, right? That's, that's where he is. Mm -hmm. If he can get you to stumble there, he knows that he can now begin to operate on your words. Well, guess what? When you start to fester on a root or a seed of doubt, I, I don't, I don't, think she is for me. I believe she's been talking about me. They, they don't seem like, guess what? That confusion, you've got you've to gotta cast that down. Without knowing your authority, you will accept anything, right? Mm -hmm. And then you'll start operating in the flesh. You'll start fighting with family members and then claim, well, that's just how we do it. Well, if you're in the bloodline of the kingdom, there's a new way to do things. So you can tell the truth to a person and not rebel against God. Um, you can love and, and understand what pleases the Lord and stay there. Mm -hmm. You can stay there. And so rebellion is a way that Satan has caused lawlessness to overrun America right now. And yeah. where lawlessness abounds, now you have witchcraft, right? And so Jesus, the Lord said so clearly, I, you better stay away from witchcraft. Really, mm -hmm. he said, you better stay away from rebellion because rebellion is the sin of witchcraft. It's lawlessness. And mm -hmm. so you have this idea, and I don't know when this began. I remember just watching hip-hop videos and pop videos, mm -hmm. and they were always talking about being independent. That is not a fruit of the Holy Spirit. That's that right. That is not from the kingdom of God because the kingdom of God says, actually, the lower you go in humility, the more mm -hmm. you submit to the, to the authority of Christ, you are now dependent, mm -hmm. not independent. So you're giving no place for the devil. Mm -hmm. So if we were to truly cast down every thought that came to our mind, can you imagine how many times a day you would be casting down thoughts? Wow. But, but we, we hear this on Sunday. We clap and we amen and we shout the pastors down if we're in a, in a you know, charismatic church. Yeah. <laughs> on Monday... We're suffering. Come Tuesday, we really aren't applying what we just learned on Sunday. Right. Why? Because we're given microwave messages for a meal that we need to sit down and enjoy. Yes. Very few people are enjoying the meat of the word, the meat of the gospel. 
and they're being overrun at home. They've got children that have, guess what? This, this society has given our children, our youth, more to feast on than ever before in history. Uh. We're in a microwave technology. Everything's got to happen right now. What happens? As soon as rebellion comes into your home, if you don't know how to fight it, right. that spirit holds the door open to more. Wow. And so what happens is you have open doors in the realm of the spirit. And this is a topic many people don't want to talk about. It's, it's just the ostrich syndrome. Just yeah. because you don't know about it or don't want to talk about it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Exactly. So where is rebellion typically in our adolescent children? You need to deal with it right away. Mm. You've got to speak affirming words over your child. You mm -hmm. know, I read, a, I read a, um, something someone sent me recently on, on Instagram, and they talked about the, the results of a dysfunctional household, that most of us grew up with parents that didn't communicate their emotions, but they spanked us and they disciplined us. And that's probably true. I turned mm -hmm. out all right. I got a lot of spanking. Um, but it's better to be able to communicate your emotions, whether they're positive or negative. But the problem is, is that we've created an environment where everything is about emotions and, and offense. So yeah. I can't really tell you truth without you thinking I'm a racist or I'm a bigot. I'm not. Mm -hmm. how, how do we get to a place where we can share the, the truth of the word? Here's one thing. Ephesians 5.10 says it's, the, it's, it's such an easy verse to remember. Carefully determine what pleases the Lord. Yes. Now, yes. that's it. That's the whole verse. Now, yeah. if there's something that pleases the Lord, there must be something that displeases the Lord, right? Absolutely, yes. So, so the tongue, rebellion often, do, it doesn't just, it's not just what you speak, it's in your attitude. Yeah. It's in your character. It's yeah. how you treat someone when they're not around. Yeah. It's in your gossip. I just posted a post about Jezebel because I said, you know what? We got to mm. deal with this spirit. We got to deal with the fact that there are realms out. There's a realm outside of the natural realm and you can't ignore it. You can't wow. ignore it. So um, rebellion and rejection, so twins. They are. That is so crazy because, you know, you're thinking about this is a generation now where all they see on TV is rebellion. Yeah. All they see is, you know, just doing the complete opposite yeah. and of what they're, they know that is the right thing to do, you know? Yeah. And, you know, I, I was just was thinking of the scripture where, you know, Paul said this, you know, sometimes God, I, I do the things and I know that I shouldn't do them, but I do them anyway. Yeah. And the things that I should do, that I know that I should be doing those things, I just don't do it. And, right. you know, that's part of our flesh too. We're fighting with our flesh of what I want, what, right. you know, what feels right to me. And yeah. again, I cannot say this enough. Just because you feel rejected does not mean that you are. And there's some of you out there you're watching right now, or you know, someone that has been struggling with rejection. You can walk into a room and you feel like you just don't fit in. And that's what, to me, that's what rejection is. It looks for a place where it can fit in. So the enemy sets a trap. He goes, Hey, I got a place for you. And that place is like a place of rebellion, but just because you feel like you fit in there because you're not rejected from it, then mm -hmm. you, you uh, find yourself in a pit that you never thought that you would be in. Yeah. And, you know, um, Sierra, I don't want to give away all of your testimony right now, but mm -hmm. tomorrow you need to tune in to the podcast and listen yeah. to her full testimony and then the testimony of her mother because Sierra yeah. went in a wayward way for 20 years. And she went off course, lived a life of rejection, but rebellion, you know, on top of that and did her and own. And I was proud of it. Yeah. I remember, <laughs> there's a place with rebellion that you can get to where you love sin more mm -hmm. than you love redemption. Wow. And I was at that place. And, and here's the beautiful part about it, Janet. I'll tell this to anyone watching. No matter how far you have gotten, you are redeemable. 
Yes. I'm going to say it again. No matter how far your children have gone, they're redeemable. Amen. I'm, re- I'm reminded of the prodigal son that came running to his father. Mm. Most people stop there, full stop. But the Bible doesn't say that is the only person that went running. The yeah. father went running towards his son. Amen. So your listeners will hear a story of redemption Yes. Um, that happened. If I had my way, I would not have written the story the way it was written. Mm-hmm. But I'm not God. And he chose it to be written that way. Yes. Wow. Um, when I think about your story, Sierra, I'm so inspired because of what God did in your life. And when I look at you right now, Mm -hmm. I'm like, wow, there's such redemption of what God has done. So Mm -hmm. we're just going to give you a little bit of insight of what the podcast is going to be about tomorrow. It comes out in the morning at five o'clock. You can go to Spotify, go under one voice makes a difference. Janet Swanson and, um, it comes out at 5 a.m., but you can listen to it all week. If you feel like you can't get to it, you know, tomorrow, then you have Tuesday. It's, it's going to be there forever, hopefully, you know. And um, it's, it's on Apple, Google, Spotify, wherever Amen. you do the podcast, it's there. So all you have to do, and I want to encourage you to listen to it and share it with people. Because mm-hmm. I want you guys to know that there was a trap set for Sierra at a young age, at 13, 14 years old. And the enemy set a trap for her. And out of that trap, um, she believed and then began to love the lifestyle. She believed that's where she belonged because she felt belonged. Is that right, Sierra? Did you feel belong, like you belonged in that that lifestyle? I, I felt at 14, it wasn't until I got a little older, Mm-hmm. I felt um, very welcomed. I felt embraced. Mm-hmm. You know, there was a lot of shame at first. There was a lot of guilt. Um, there was a lot of isolation. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when we sin, we tend to run from God. Yeah. And that's the first thing. That's the first act we typically do. We think we're unworthy. We think that he can't possibly love us in this state of uncleanliness. But yes. um, how many of you know, maybe put it in the comments, I know that God loves me even through my filth. Mm. Um, now there's, there's this, this thing that the Lord has been saying to me for decades, like literally, I want to say two decades, he has never authored the suffering, but he did permit the cost. Mm. And because he permitted the cost of what I went through, Mm -hmm. that's what determined my value. Yeah. If you were to go to a grocery store, Walmart, Publix, Kroger, Whole Foods, Mm -hmm. go on the aisle where you see olives. And then go further down the aisle and you'll see olive oil. Mm -hmm. Compare the price of the two and you'll see the price of olive oil as opposed to the olive. Mm -hmm. And it's because of the pressing. It's because of the cost of what it costs to process that same product Mm -hmm. is down the aisle. And so while I asked the Lord, why did I stay in this lifestyle for 20 years? How many times did you spare me from death? Why didn't you just take me? The one thing I kept hearing him say over and over and over was because I love your mother's prayers. Mm-hmm. I love your mother's prayers. Now, it wasn't until I was in my late 30s that I understood the power of prayer. Yeah. Because I was rebellious. I was lost. I enjoyed sin. I didn't think there was anything wrong with going to the clubs and living one way one minute and the next minute maybe dipping in and out of church. Come on. I wasn't too sanctified to ignore the warnings. Yeah. God let me, he let me know you can only go so far because I gave my life to the Lord at 13. So my spirit already belonged to God. Mm -hmm. My spirit was already his. I was already marked. But how many of you know that you can be marked loving God and still walking in sin and totally oblivious of your calling and your destiny? Mm-hmm. And so yeah. I was veiled. So let, let's put it this way. I can be in a room in my house and turn off, turn on all the lights, but there's still a room in the house that has a, a, a room that's dark without yeah. light. All right. So I had to get to a place where I recognize I need him to come in completely and heal and cleanse me. Mm-hmm. And then I've got to make a conscious decision to walk away from 
what I loved, what I thought I loved the most, because really you don't know what you don't know. That's, That's right. the truth. And I didn't know him. I had been fed a lot of things about who Jehovah was and who Yahweh was. I didn't even know him for myself. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know his voice. I, I didn't know anything except what the pastor said. There yeah. was no, and what's the difference with that in Catholicism? Yeah. You know, no offense to anyone that's Catholic watching, but he doesn't need an intermediary. He doesn't need a medium. Mm. For me, he said, come to me, Sierra. Yeah. And when I finally bowed my knee, so I was in sin. No, I was in bondage. I was in a spiritual prison mm. um, from 14 to 34. Wow. I, I'm going to write about it one day, but it was very... Um, dark. It was very lonely. Mm. Um, because who God made you to be doesn't change when you're in bondage. You st still feel and love the same. You mm -hmm. still miss your family. So mm -hmm. I'll tell you this, and I feel led to say this to someone that's going to be watching or is watching. If your child is living an alternative lifestyle or living very far from what you know is their calling and the destiny, and you're ashamed of that, mm -hmm. you're hurt by that, you probably have a spouse or even yourself, you've written them off and said, well, you know what? That's their life. I would encourage you to get back on your knees and pray nonstop for that child. Amen. I would encourage you to say, you know what, God, what did you write in heaven before you formed this, this soul and knit them in my womb? Mm -hmm. And so if you have a cousin, an aunt, a friend that is just wilding out, they're just they think that they've got time to live however they want to live. Let me tell you something. You may be the only intercessor. You may be the yeah. only one presenting their name before the Lord. Yeah. So I had that person and, and that person was my mom. Wow. And she, let me tell you, y'all, I'll tell you, you want to listen to her interview, which mm -hmm. is the second podcast. Um, because while I was trying to get into the clubs mm -hmm. and, do, and do life, my mom was on her knees in her prayer closet going to war mm. with Satan for my soul. Wow. And we know the end of the story. Jesus won and he's been Woo. high fiving my mom ever since. <laughs> hey, I love it. I love it. <laughs> well, you know, um, some of you guys that are out there and you're watching tonight, I want you to know that um, God is greater than your bondage. Mm. God is greater than your struggle. Yeah. God is greater than the demons that are fighting for you. And I, I just feel in my spirit, there's a couple things that I'm feeling in my spirit for you tonight. Number one is that um, the Lord loves you so much and he wants to go to that dark room and whatever's mm -hmm. in that dark room. He's not afraid of darkness. I love what Psalm 139 says. It says, Lord, um, darkness is as light to you. Yeah. And, you know, when you're in a dark room and someone turns the lights on, what's the first thing you do you, or say, turn the lights off. It's hurting mm -hmm. my eyes. That's right. <laughs> you know, you're squinting and you're like, oh, I can't take it. I can't take it. And that's your first initial response when the Lord walks into your room because you have felt rejected for so long. Now you're like, turn it off. I can't take it. I don't want it. I can't have it right now. Yes. Yeah, but the yeah. longer you sit in it, if you will just mm -hmm. get through the first initial shock and the pain of it, you will start seeing things from a different perspective. And, you know, that's right. The Lord will begin to change things. Mm -hmm. And I just I, I want someone to know that the Lord wants to invade your darkness tonight. I don't know if it's depression. I don't know if it's an alternative lifestyle. I don't know if you're if you feel rejected or you you're in rebellion right now. Hey, Jamie, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it's a lot of bitterness and unforgiveness. Mm. That, that's what I'm picking up. And and I would I'd like to just jump in and say bitterness and unforgiveness are automatic open doors to the enemy. Amen. Open doors. Mm. You don't have to try to scream and shout, baby. He's got a key to your house. Oh, Lord Jesus. So he's got a key front door. Mm. So I, I'm feeling it's bitterness and unforgiveness and it is a root that only Jesus himself and you partnering together to mm -hmm. uproot that thing. You may, that person may, that person or persons, it may be a pastor that hurt you. Yeah. It may be an organization that fired you. Mm -hmm. It may be a spouse that cheated on you and left you. 
Mm-hmm. Um, it, it may be a, a friend that should have had your back, but because they were wounded, they were hurt. They hurt you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I just want to tell you, uh, I feel the Holy Spirit putting on my heart that bitterness and unforgiveness, hear me, these are two massive, this is a personalized Home Depot made key and mm-hmm. you handing it directly to the enemy and saying, you mm-hmm. have permission to wreck my life. Wow. This is why so many people in the body of Christ are exhausted. Oh yeah. yeah. They're, they're exhausted. Mm-hmm. There, there, there's no way you can fight against an enemy that has permission to come through your front door. He's yes. intentionally going to wreak havoc. So I just, I just wanted to jump in right there and I feel like it's, it's bitterness and unforgiveness. That's, Thank that's you. also what the Lord wants to deal with. So you heard that guys, if you feel like you're holding that in your heart, you know, you need to forgive somebody, truly forgive that person that did you wrong and not only forgive them, but go to um, the extent and say, yeah. I'm going to start praying for them and blessing them. That's so right. the way that you, a lot of people see, or I don't know how to forgive, you know, mm-hmm. they, they're just like, well, how do you do it? How do you just let people say, just let it go, just let it go. And, you know, I remember when um, I first got saved, I was 17 years old and, and the Lord took me by the hand when I got saved. And he said, listen, I'm going to walk with you for Amen. the rest of your life. And I'm going to take you through troubled waters. I'm going to bring you out. I'm going to show you what's in your heart and I'm going to heal you. Yeah. I'm going to go through the valley with you. I'm going to take you to the mountaintop because yeah. life is full of valleys and mountains, full of them. I mean, you may be on the mountaintop right now, but let me tell you, on the other side, on both sides of that mountaintop are two valleys, okay? So you're going to, and in this walk, in this life, we're going to have trouble. We're going to walk through hills and valleys. We're going to do it. But I remember the Lord taking me by the hand and walking me through how to forgive my stepfather for sexually abusing me, how to forgive my mom for abandoning me. And she, she could have chosen which one she wanted, but she chose my stepfather over me. And then I was put into foster care and I had so much bitterness and I was so angry because when you have bitterness and unforgiveness, there's a spirit of anger that that comes in too. And when you look out in the world, we see a lot of angry people because things have happened to them and they're mad about it and they don't see the justice behind it. But can I tell you at the end of the day, God, the word says that vengeance belongs to him, not us. So we have to give that right up to try to, to settle everything on our own Mm -hmm. and forgiveness is for you. Mm -hmm. And when I, when I finally came before the Lord and I said, I said, okay, God, how do I do this? I don't even know how to let this go. I feel like I have a soul tied to it. I feel like I'm tied together with my pain, with the things that happened to me. And the Lord spoke to me and he says, do it like Jesus did. You know, and I'm like, what do you mean? When Jesus was hanging on the cross, this is what he said. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Amen. And that just brought a whole new light. It wasn't my stepfather or my mom that did it to me. It was the enemy trying to destroy my life. And when you look at things like that and you, because we're all, we're controlled either, you're either controlled by the spirit of the world or you're controlled by the spirit of God and the kingdom. That's right. And there's no gray areas there. You're either in or you're out. I love what my son said one time, Sierra. I I told him, I said, baby, you almost won that ball game. He said, mama, almost is not good enough. We lost. (laughs) So there's no almost being a Christian. Okay. or Almost being a sinner. It's you're either in or you're out. And a lot of people in this time, everybody wants gray areas and they got 50 shades of them, baby. That somebody even wrote a book about it. Go out there and just do it any way you want. Live life what you want and then have God on the side too. But that's not yeah. the way, that's not the way God does stuff. No, sir. No. He says, Hey, if you follow me and you, and you let me take you by the hand mm-hmm. 
not only will I give you life more abundantly, but I will bring a peace that the world does not bring. That's right. And money can't buy it. People That's can't right. give it to you. Your children can't give it to you. Things cannot give it to you. But God says, That's if right. you will follow me, I will give you an internal peace. Come on. And that's what forgiveness does. And yeah. when you finally let go of that and you forgive them and you begin to pray, because when you forgive somebody, guess what? You start praying for them. It just happens. You right. know, when you forgive them, you start praying for them. And, mm -hmm. you know, I had to learn that since it was family, <laughs> somebody, mm -hmm. you got to see them on a regular basis. So I figured mm -hmm. out that, oh, that's what you meant 70 times seven, Lord. Yes. Sometimes it's the same offense over and over because the enemy wants mm -hmm. to keep bringing it up to you. But I just had to keep letting it go. And the moment that I saw um, how the Lord showed me how to forgive is by saying, you know, as Jesus said, forgive them for they know not what they do. It wasn't my stepfather that did those things to me. He was controlled by an evil spirit. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't my mom that did that to me. She was controlled by rejection and abandonment herself and pain and hurt. And the thing is, you guys, when you are controlled by your wounds and by the pain of life, it, right. it, it leads you to do stuff that you would never do before, you know? And mm. the Lord wants to give you peace in your life. And he wants to lead you in a life more abundantly. I'm, yeah. I'm talking about abundant life in the hills and the valleys. And he is the God of the hill and God of the mountain. I know that you, um, the God of the mountain and the God of the valleys. I know that you've probably heard that old song. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, he, he is. And he will yeah. walk you through life and he will help you. Somebody say he's going to help me. Go ahead and put that Come in on. the comments right now. God's going to help me. He has Thank sent you. the Holy Spirit to be your helper. Now, um, I want us to close tonight and we um, with just a prayer. And I want you to be encouraged that um, if you have a friend or a prodigal son or daughter or even a mom or dad that mm -hmm. is living an alternative lifestyle, um, I want you to know that Sierra tomorrow is going to share her story with the world how God brought her out of a homosexual lifestyle. And now she's married to a man and pregnant and about to give birth any day. <laughs> <laughs> and this is what God, this is the redemption story of God, of what God can do. And it may look hopeless, but it's not. Yeah. I'm telling you with God, all things are possible. Sierra, is there anything else you want to share with our viewers before we go? Yes, I'd love to. Uh, you mentioned earlier about um, being hurt and, and having that bitterness and that, that unforgiveness in your heart. And you talked about, and I was writing some notes here, you said giving up the right to hold on was the most difficult thing. And immediately I heard, in, I heard the Holy Spirit say, what she's speaking about is control. Ooh. Now understand that control is something that every human being loves to have. But mm -hmm. can I tell you, that's not a fruit of the Holy Spirit. In fact, self-control is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And so All right. when, when you get into the fruit of the flesh, God can't help you. God mm -hmm. can't operate there. So what he has to do is, unfortunately, let you reap the consequences of the fruit of the flesh mm -hmm. and say, you know, I don't like how this feels. So 90% of the time, we're constantly in a cycle when God says, I only meant for this to be a season. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. God does things in seasons. Satan does them in cycles. So right. learn your lesson, get out of the flesh. Mm -hmm. um, I, one of the ways that I was able to learn how to forgive some of those unforgivable things, if you know what I mean, some of those gut wrenching, yeah. how could you do this to me situations? Yes. And, yes. and sometimes how could you do this to me again? Um, right. I, I had to get to a place where I had to let God hedge me up in his protection but I first had to get to a place where I knew how to repent and mm -hmm. then ring out. Wow. So I had to repent for holding on to bitterness. I had to repent for how I truly felt. Forget all that fluff. God doesn't do fluff. He, he can see down to the core of who you are. Yeah. So I just tell him, hey, you're big enough. This is how I feel. Yeah. And then the Lord would say, what are you going to do with it? All right. 
Ooh, I so love then I had to renounce it. Mm-hmm. I don't like feeling like this, but I, I repent for saying X, Y, and Z and also holding on to it. So mm-hmm. after I repented and I renounced, then the hedge of protection was able to be formed around me. Yes. Because otherwise I still had a breach in into my soul that the enemy was able to come like a swinging door. Mm. Okay. And so I just, I just feel like um, tomorrow's podcast is going to really help some people that while my testimony is coming out of the bondage of lust and perversion, right? Mm -hmm. That's not the only sin that the Lord delivered me from. I was a liar. I was a cheater. Mm. I manipulated. I mean, there were so many things that were not on the surface, but the Lord had to like an onion peel every layer. Yes. And so what we tend to do as Christians is only look at the outward layer. Mm. And then we judge and say, well, that's a good person. And that one's going to heaven. And that one's, oh, that's, that one's definitely going to hell. We Uh don't know. (laughs) Right. So I had to get to a place where I said, Lord, I want you to consume me and heal me and fill me. And then he said, Mm -hmm. really what you're asking me to do to sanctify you. Yes. So sanctification is important. And I I think that's what's missing. A lot of us go to church and we do the right things. We say the right things. But mm-hmm. we're not sanctified. We're not letting the Holy Spirit come in and, and be that Mr. Clean in our soul. Mm-hmm. Um, and instead, we just, we, we put on a cloak. We, we look and act righteous. We sound and smell the right way. But inside, mm-hmm. we have a stench that God will one day say, de- hopefully, mm-hmm. depart. We don't want him to say, depart from me. That's so we right. got to get it right now. That's right. We got to get it right right now. So. I praise God for this podcast that's coming out. I also thank God for this, this opportunity to go live with you. Mm -hmm. I think that the more that the body of Christ talks about the realities of life, people Mm -hmm. will want to be in the house of God. That's why people don't want to be in the house of God. It's too much work. It's too much work to perform. And the Lord is permitting us to be exhausted. Mm -hmm. Listen, Ephesians 6, 18 is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite verses in the Bible. And it says, pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Mm. But this is the part B. This is the key. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. It doesn't say some believers. It doesn't say, well, you know what? I like them this week. I don't really like their politics. I don't like that they're a Republican or that she's still a Mm. Democrat. It says all for right. all believers, be persistent. That's so what right. God is demanding through through the Apostle Paul is become selfless. Amen. Be selfless. And yeah. the, the more you're selfless, the more God can trust you. Yes. Oh, that's powerful. That is so powerful. And what came to me while you were talking was husbands. Do I have any husbands out there that are listening? This word just came to me for all the men that are listening Mm -hmm. right there, if you are engaged, if you're dating someone, or if you're married, the word says, husbands, you need to wash your wife with the word of God. You wash her with the word. It doesn't say women, you do this to him. No, it means there's something powerful when the husband begins to Mm -hmm. speak the word of God over his wife. And to begin to proclaim that. And then in return, I believe what happens is that when the wife feels that, she begins to flow in that. Mm-hmm. She begins to feel that sanctification. And she be, she begins to feel that anointing rise up where she is able now to wash yeah, everybody yeah. around her with the yes. word of God. I can tell you, Sierra, my husband has always spoke the word over me since the day we were married he spoke Mm -hmm. life over me and he kept saying one day you're going to talk to people one day you're going to tell your story one and he kept saying and i was like nope nope i'm not going to do that no the word of god says this about you the word of god says that about you and he kept saying that and then in return, I started reading the word because he would say these things. And I was like, you know what? I want to go and see for myself. And when I would open up the Bible, I would feel a washing. The mm. word of God is so powerful. And I want to mm. encourage
encourage you, get into the word of God and let the word of God wash you. Yeah. And husbands, begin to, to um, read the word and prophesy to your wife. Speak life over her. And women, I want to encourage you, let your husband speak those things over you. Listen yeah. to them for a minute. Listen to what they're trying to say and let them speak life. Amen. And Amen. Um, let's resist the enemy. This warfare. I mean, the in the book of Daniel, I think it's 725, if I believe correctly, it says that the enemy comes to weary the saints. He wants yeah. to wear you out. And as um, Sierra said, God's going to allow that. You know why? Because now when you, when you get tired and you get wore out, now you can say it's not by might nor by power, but by the spirit of God. And right. that's where we are. I believe that's where the church is right now. Mm. God's about to do something incredible. God's about mm. to heal somebody's body. God's about to, to bring a broken relationship back together. God's mm. about to um, pour his spirit and fill you with the Holy Spirit. Even upon the sound of my voice, you are yes. feeling the Holy Spirit moving inside of you right now. Mm. And, um, some of you need a financial miracle, and I'm speaking that over you, that God wants yes. to bless you financially. The, God, the Lord wants to bless you mentally. The Lord yes. wants to bless you spiritually. The Lord wants yes. to take away depression, your ups and downs, in and out. The Lord is able. Somebody say, God mm. is able to do anything. I believe. Somebody say, I believe. I believe, I believe. in miracles. Go yes. ahead. Write it in the comments right there. Say, I believe in miracles. I believe that God can do anything. God is more powerful than any struggle you are going through. He is more powerful than the stronghold or the chains yes. that bind you. God is, he is not afraid of your darkness. Oh, mm -hmm. I just love that about him. He's not afraid of um, how deep you are in sin. I was quoting the scripture this morning. No matter where you make your bed, if it's in the pits of hell, God's arm is not too short that he cannot reach down to where yeah. you are. You know, yeah. and I want to encourage you guys. You know, the word says that we are to encourage each other on a daily basis. I want to encourage you to start encouraging somebody else every day. Every day. <laughs> every day. Every day. We need to encourage somebody because when you start encouraging somebody, guess what? You get encouraged. It begins to fill your life back up when you begin to pour out into somebody else's life. Look, go back into the comments. You're going to see that um, I put the, the link for the podcast. And mm -hmm. I want you guys to tune in tomorrow. I want you to share this podcast. I want you to copy and paste the link. Send it to all your friends, all your contacts and your phone. Send mm -hmm. it out. If you know someone or a mom that's been praying or a dad that's been praying for their children, send it out. Send it out. And this is the way we're spreading the gospel. This is the way that we're doing this is through social media now. And we're evangelizing the social media. Okay. Amen. So let's get that word out. Um, I thank you for letting us come into your house tonight. Thank you for bearing with us as we talk. I can't wait for you to hear the podcast tomorrow. It's going to be wonderful. I love you guys. Sierra, thank you so much for being with us. And um, thank you. we look forward and to what God is going to do in your life. And Amen. I can't wait for the baby to get here. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> hey, hey. Well, listen, you guys, um, we will see you tomorrow night for day 29. I can't believe it, of 30 days of inspiration. I love you. Hope you have a good night tonight. Bye. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.